Hey, Monty, uh, another close one there late in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Your thoughts on uh, the execution on both ends uh, that got you the win? Well, I, I didn't think the execution was bad uh, tonight down the stretch. I mean, we, we were able to score and get stops when we needed to. But before clutch time, the attention to uh, who can shoot and who we need to run off the line wasn't where it needs to be uh, tonight with Gallo and Bogdanovich. Like, you, you have to run those guys off the line. Um, but, you know, we found a, a way to get a win. Um, and I thought <clears throat> Mikhail being in those those moments where he has to make a play down the stretch, I think for us, that's going to help us uh, keep teams honest uh, so we don't have to go to book all the time. We don't have to go to Chris all of the time. I thought that was a, a huge moment for Mikhail. And then I thought the rebounding um, against I think the best offensive rebounding team in the league. I thought that helped us for sure tonight. Uh, DA, uh, his ability to rebound and keep guys off the glass. I thought DA's jump hook in the post uh, was a huge bucket for us, a growth moment for him. So it, it wasn't, you know, like you, like everybody wants a pretty win. When I, I just want wins, you know what I mean? And I, I just think, you know, you have to take them any way you can get them. You went with the switching, I believe, all game defensively. Yeah. What did you like from that, and what didn't you like from that? Well, it wasn't we, – we go late switches when we feel like the ball is in the paint. Uh, I didn't like the lack of communication. The times where we left Capella on the backside by himself, that, that was just a lack of communication. Um, the last two or three minutes, I thought it was a lot better. Um, you know, D.A. gets a big stop. You know, we blitzed a couple times. I thought that helped us. Our backside – rotations hurt us. We gave up a few threes on the backside because of Capella's ability to put pressure on the rim, but they're a dynamic team. I mean, they, they have shooting. Uh, Trey is, is a monster. You know, he can get to the free throw line. He can shoot it from deep. He's a great passer. And though we knew they weren't going to quit. I mean, they, those guys have a lot of firepower on that team. Next is Dwayne Rankin and then Paul Richardson. Coach, you've said numerous times that if you put in the work for it to, to go ahead and shoot it, and, and Jay, after two bad shooting games, uh, to be able to hit the way he hit tonight with that huge corner three, obviously, uh, just would it speak to him about sticking with it when he could easily not taking those shots because of how he shot the previous two games? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want guys thinking about not taking a shot. You know, I just don't think that's the way you can play. You, you you have to be able to keep teams honest with your drive, but you know Jay's not the kind of guy that's going to shy away from shots. Um, and, and we talked uh, yesterday about uh, the shot in in Charlotte when we had 11 seconds on the clock on the shot clock. That that's probably not a a great shot when we were trying to manage um, the clock down the stretch. But other than that, like I don't want him thinking. He puts the work in. Um, he's a diligent worker. And he's confident. And, and I've always said it to you guys, I like guys who are willing to take big shots. And just a quick follow, uh, uh, Sarge, that, that third quarter, and, and, and obviously throughout the game, I thought that third, he had, he was part of a spurt that fended him off a little bit. Uh, just your, your thoughts on how he, how he played today. Well, with the second unit, we, we have to play through Dario. You know, he gives you the ability to um, throw it to a guy that will make plays. Um, he had one tough turnover where I thought he was trying to force the issue. Other than that, he just, he made effective plays all night. And <clears throat> when campaign is agitating the paint, Dario in some ways becomes the point guard out there because Cam is, is more of a score combo, whereas Dario is somewhat of a, a 0 .5, 0 .4, if you will, as far as facilitating and connecting both sides of the floor. but. I thought he was really good in the paint. He shot the ball. Um, his ability to stretch the floor and attack the paint and find people is something that we value. Next is Paul Richardson, followed by Gina Mizell. Coach, how important is it to get games like this? Nate McMillan always has his team tough, mentally ready. How important is a close game like this against a mentally tough team and coach and getting you prepared for that, that next season, the, the postseason? It's huge. I mean, when, when Nate was, you know, everywhere he's been, his teams have played that way. They never give in, uh, rarely get blown out. And, um, you know, he, he 
adjusted all night. We adjusted. They went zone. We went to switching. Uh, we went to blitzing. Um, it wasn't a chess match because neither one of us knows how to play chess. It was a checker uh, fest, and we were just trying to figure out what was going to help our team. But that's a tough team over there. I mean, Capella has helped them immensely on both ends of the floor and just kind of knew that they weren't going to go away. Next is Gina Mizell. Hey, Monty, uh, you talked about Dario's impact off the bench, but also Tori, what he was able to come in and, and scoring and rebounding and just kind of felt like he was all over the place all night. Just how have you seen him continue to get acclimated and maybe what was he most successful at tonight for you guys? His rebounding really helped us. Um, the slashing and the ability to score, you know, we, we everybody loves scoring, but to be able to rebound from that position and the offensive rebound really helped us uh, to see a big, strong dude like that, a wing, come flying in there and rebounding out of his space, uh, helped us get extra possessions. And then his defense, you know, he's a physical defender. Uh, he can guard multiple positions and, you know, we're, we're grateful uh, to have him and, and get him when we did. Yeah, Chris, uh, coach talked about, he said he liked the uh, end of game execution, but wasn't happy with leading up to the end of the game and thought miscommunication played a part in Atlanta getting back in it. Just how would you assess maybe the last seven, eight minutes? Yeah, we got uh, to be better. Um, I think that's probably the most frustrating part for me is, um, you know, we closed the game out, but we shouldn't have been in that situation. And I don't know how many ga games we got left, but we got to, some point we got to start showing signs of getting better at that. What did you? What did, just just your experience? Obviously, you know, in this league, what what is either not working or not clicking that, that you can see right now that this specifically has to get better for us? Um, I had some bad turnovers down the stretch. I think it's got to be better decision making, uh, getting timely stops. We did it tonight, but. Um, you know, whether we execute or not on offense, I think we got to be able to rely on our defense. Next up is going to be Kellen Olsen, and then we'll have Gina Mizell. Hey, Chris, you guys were switching a lot tonight. Obviously, that comes with a lot of communication and working together. How would you assess the way you guys defended in that scheme tonight? Um, we had good spurts. We had um, some not so good, but it's always going to be tough when you're playing against it team is setting ball screens that many times, you know, every time down, uh, they, they set ball screens and Clint's a great screen setter. Trey is great at reading and getting guys shots and finding his own shots. So uh, we managed to get out of this one with a win. On a question is Gina Mizell. Hey, Chris, uh, Dario comes off the bench and, and gives you guys 20 points, but coach often talks about just the facilitator that he is, the connector that he is on offense um, as a guy who's also facilitating all the time. Just what do you see from Dario in his ability to kind of be, play that type of role for you guys off the bench? I think there's a trust factor there with Dario. You know, we just, uh, we, we trust him. I know I do. You know, when the ball's in his hands, uh, you know, he's going to make, uh, you know, the right decision. And he's always going to have the right intentions. He plays the right way. You said he had 20 tonight. He did, yes. Yeah, which is great. Like Dario's one of those guys that his value to the team doesn't always uh, show up on the stat sheet. So nice to see him get those 20 tonight. Dario, it's always tough after a, a road trip, uh, the, that first one. How do you feel like you guys handled that, particularly in the last six, seven minutes of the game, maybe when the legs could get heavy? Yeah, uh, it was a tough game for us. We were like up and down. In the first half, you know, I think um, uh, we were kind of there. You know, we have like a we have like some good stretch, you know, down the down the road. But uh, it was a tough game, you know. Obviously, we have seventy two games this year. Schedule is is tough, you know. Obviously, we not play amazing every night and play and have like a great games. And sometimes, you know, you need to find a way how to win. And I think we did the great tonight, you know. Uh, we make a couple of winning plays, you know, DA defense, you know, his rebound, Chris shot, uh, JC steal that ball. You know, I think we have like, like same like Miss Mikel last, uh, last game against uh, Charlotte. And I think obviously, you know, sometimes it'll be a rough game for us. Sometimes it will not be beautiful to watch, but like 
you know, you need to win those kind of games if you want to stick, you know, in a, and be a winning team. Real quick, Dario, your game individually, uh, that third quarter, I thought you had a stretch where hit a three, got inside and scored, and then found a, found a shot for a three. Uh, just maybe speak to how you were feeling, because it's been not necessarily in the flow for you the last few games before tonight. Yeah, it was a kind of uh, it was kind of tough for me. Uh, it was kind of tough for me, you know. Last ten days, you know, I, I, I was up, up and down. You know, it was kind of hard to catch the rhythm. You know, I don't know really how to how they happen. You know, sometimes that's the part of the life. But I think other guys were playing good. You know, they kind of replaced me in uh, in some games. Uh, uh, I'm talking about the unit from the from the second unit. And tonight, you know, I felt that I'm doing okay. You know, I have a like nice, easy float uh, from, uh, uh, I think, Cam passed me. And kind of, I felt it, you know, I'm feeling good. You know, I hit the first three and, uh, you know, I think that was a good game for me. But end of everything, you know, we get the team win. And I think that's the most important. We keep grinding, you know, to, you know, I don't know, is that first place or the second place? But like, you know, we want to, be there. Next, we'll go to Kellen Olson, followed by Gina Mizell. Hey, Dario, you and Tori Craig seem to have some chemistry already. He, he knows to cut when, you, when you've got the ball. What's it like for you as a big to kind of establish that relationship and let like your wings and guards know that if they cut, you'll be able to find them? Yeah, of course, get me. Of course, it's easier, you know, if I get the ball on low cost and, and uh, somebody is making a three-point shot, you know, and somebody make a cut, you know, obviously next time and I will be in that position, you know, I will have more space for my game on the low post, you know, that's kind of what uh, what's open, uh, what's, what is basketball, you know what I mean? That's the beauty of basketball. I think uh, TC came here, you know, he really established himself like uh, one of the important guys and he's really trying hard, he's on, Every offensive rebound here is on every defensive rebound. rebound. And uh, obviously, you know, he knows how to play and he tried to re his defender, you know, uh, when I get the ball down there. And I think he's doing that even good, you know, and I don't know, Chris Chris is playing pick and roll and that kind of stuff too. Next up is Gina Mazel. Hey, Dario. Uh, Coach is always so complimentary about the way that you can read the defense and how the offense can run through you when that second unit is out there. Just how did you first learn? I mean, I'm talking way back. How did you first learn to sort of read the game? Like, was it a coach? Was it just, you know, the teams you grew up on? Just how did you first learn that aspect of the game? Yeah, but I always kind of have like some kind of, I don't know how to say like, let's say IQ for, for basketball. And I was, when I was young, you know, I was really good in, uh, I don't know, in passing and finding some solution in offense and kind of, you know, when you have that feeling, you know, you try to do it the same thing even here in NBA, you know, it's obviously it's like the best players in the world, but you try to find your game too, you know, sometimes it's a little bit harder, you know, in some teams, sometimes, you know, it's not everything what you expect, for example, but, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, when I was younger, I had a good coach down, uh, back in, uh, in, uh, in Croatia, you know, who really teach me how to understand the basketball, how to, uh, how to, what's the beauty of basketball, end of the day. And I think that's the, that's the, what keeps me going, you know, obviously, you know, if I make a good pass, you know, that will be easier for me in the next, uh, in the next, uh, uh, in the next offense, you know, and uh, obviously on another side, you have like a great, I would say killers, like a book, you know what I mean? Like who is just machine can score on multiple ways. And, uh, you know, you have like a lot of different players in this league, you know. And like on any given possession, like, how many things are going through your head? Because if from our perspective, it might look like, oh my gosh, he's looking at this, he's looking at this, where's the ball going? Like, just how do you keep your brain straight, I guess, in those moments? Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. Like, it's, it's just feeling, you know, sometimes, you know, try to try to guess, you know, from which guy they will help, for example, which guy will be open, you know, and you hope, like, your teammates, you know, make a couple of slides on the left or right, you know, to, to make them open and kind of, 
you just can't. I think it's just read. I think that's the why. Why you know, like you hear like 400 players in NBA, you know, who can really do that and make that kind of quick decision, and uh, that's why we play here. Let's say, mm -hmm. uh, and it's, I think it's just feeling. You have like a great, amazing passers in this league. You have a Chris, you know, who is like, who is an all star, uh, like who is an uh, all time leader, top five, and. Uh, you know, like he would probably say the same thing. It's just feeling, you know. Sometimes it's just feeling, you know. That's that's why he is the one of the best point guards ever, you know. And that's why I'm trying to, you know, make make best I can uh, from the my plays down there on the low post. First, Jay, I just wanted just to check and make sure how was that your knee or was you hyperextended on that first ankle? Three? Ankle. It was your ankle. Okay, okay. It was your ankle. How how was that feeling right now? I'm a little sore, but I, I should be good. I just got treatment. Uh, wake up in the morning, get treatment. I should be good. Okay. Uh, finish the game. Just to follow, uh, to be able to come back after 0 for 9 the other night, and she, 0 for 9 from 3 the other night against Charlotte, and then, and, then go, and then go 5 of 8 today, including that corner 3. The fact that you didn't even know that, that's why I'm getting ready to ask. How do you overcome that? I guess the answer is you didn't even to have, keep that with you while uh, going into today's game. No, I had, I didn't even know I went that. I didn't know I went open. I never went open nine in my life. Uh, but um, we got the win. That's what I was really focused on in Charlotte. I don't even remember. Uh, I know I couldn't th throw a rock in the ocean a little. I didn't know I went open nine though. But uh, yeah, my mindset is just next game and whenever good or bad, next game can't get too high, too low in this league. It's a lot of games, a lot of tough skills you get thrown at you, so you can't get too high, too low. And that's my that's my mindset. Next up is Kellen Olsen, and then we'll have Cameron Cox. Hey, Jay, you guys switched a lot tonight defensively with what Atlanta does. Uh, you talked about communication being so big for this team. How would you assess the way you guys went through everything that comes with switching? We had times where we lacked, and they got back into it because of our communication. We've been talking about that. But once we once we pick back up, pick the communication pick back up to where it needs to be, uh, we were able to get some stops, uh, uh, timely stops as well, especially that last one when D.A. switched uh, the pick and roll with, with, with Trey Young on him. Did a great job of just just being – just all, all of us doing a, com a great job of communication and talking to Big Fella while he's on the island with Trey. And um, he did a good job of getting the stops. So when we needed to, we, we picked up to where it needs to be. We got to find a way to sustain it for 48 minutes, but that's the working process of, of it all. Next is Cameron Cox with 12 News, and then we'll have Dwayne Rankin. AJ, hey after you hit that three, I saw you got up and were, were pretty excited. I think you high-fived a fan, and was, I think a fan slapped you on your back or something. Just how did that feel to have that interaction with fans again like that and feed off that energy? Those moments haven't really happened a lot, you know, right. in a I mean, while probably. Yeah, we. As, I know as, as basketball players, competitors, you, you miss that energy. That, that, that's a different type of energy, and especially with our, with our home crowd being here behind, behind us, we, we try to feed off of that a little bit. And uh, I just think that's what that's what home court is all about. Um, we're, we're excited to have our fans in the building. Um, but definitely you feed off of that. And um, that was good. That was a great energy at the end of the game right there. Throughout the whole game, we obviously felt, felt our home court. So it was great. Final question is Dwayne Rankin. Yeah, yeah, Jay, I was asking Chris the same thing about end of game situation, which is, uh, it's been a challenge here, here lately. He said, well, I don't know how many games we got left, but we got to get better. What things specifically do you feel like need to be better uh, to, to in finishing games? And of course, part of that is who you're playing as well. So, but on you guys' end, what has to get better at the end of games for you guys? Getting to our, I feel like tonight, end of game, we was on our, we was on our heels a little bit. They, they had some momentum going down the stretch with like four or three minutes to go and left in the game. And we felt like, I felt like we was on, we was on our heels a little bit with everything, with, with our play calling, we wasn't trying to, get to what we need to get to with a little sense of urgency. And I felt like once that switch flipped over, I think we came out the timeout and, and, and CP went and got, got a little jump shot and they called the timeout immediately after, immediately after that. We was talking about like our sense of urgency. And I, I think it picked up uh, at a timely manner. Uh, but I think we know we know where the head of the snake is and that's Chris and, 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 uh, and Devin making the plays. I mean, everybody else playing off of that. We just, we put the ball in those guys' hands to make the right reads. And we got to be us, me, Kel, whoever's finished the game, got to be in position to uh, make plays off of those guys. So uh, we got to continue to get better, continue to watch film on it. But I think we have concepts of what we need to get to, but we got to do it with a little sense of urgency. And I think uh, we got to focus in on that going down the home stretch of the, of the season.